When I was a kid, my head was filled with dreams of becoming a famous film director. I would spend hours just looking at the movie posters outside the local cinema, always a little confused about the procedure for actually buying a ticket. What could be a greater life, I thought, than spending long, glamorous days in Hollywood putting together continuity and spotting lists, or overseeing color correction on negatives damaged in transit. But the reviews for my first short film, an animated adaptation of a poem I saw on a bookmark, were unkind. A little-known studio in Guam called Wengi Brothers nevertheless gave me a shot at making an action feature. That movie, Idaho Bates and the Expensive Jewels, spelled the end of my professional association with the cinema. Outside of my disastrous six-year marriage to Julianne Moore, I had nothing to do with movies and slowly became bitter. But one day I realized I didn't need that medium to spread my art like an unyielding virus. All I need is a microphone, some illegally downloaded podcasting software, and the acting skills of some friends from the puzzle store. What follows are my dream versions of five of my favorite films, correcting the mistakes of their creators. I hope you enjoy them. This is your boss's house? It's incredible. This is a Christmas party. Yeah, you wouldn't think working for Soap Opera Digest would be so stunningly lucrative. Look at this. This nativity scene is made entirely from wheat things. Oh my god, look. The bounce house out on the lawn has its own espresso bar inside it. Hey, Paul! Donna! Hey. Hey, guys. Welcome. Hey, listen, I want you to, I want you to relax and mingle... There is a living foosball game in the main hall, and if you get hungry, uh, something I like to call the 100 yards of Brie. Thanks, sir. All right. Bye now. I'm going to hit the bar. Let's go. I heard he filled his jacuzzi with raisinets. I want to check that out first. I'll meet you over there. Good evening, madam. My name is... Gilderoy Lockhart. I'm from South Carolina. My name's Donna. Pleased to meet you. Tell me, Donna, have you ever eaten ham off the back of your lover's knee? My husband once got a piece of candy corn stuck to his forehead. I made that disappear pretty damn fast. Oh, you're married. What a shame. But I'm sure... Your husband isn't the type of man who would mind if we went upstairs and played boggle. Ooh. Oh, well, that was that was a good party. You, you don't you don't see a lot of castrati perform in private homes these days. So, uh, who who is that? South Carolina-sounding guy who was making a move on you. No one. Who was that woman you were shamelessly flirting with beside the Gatorade fountain? That was my old kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Storb. We were talking about her hip replacement. I think you're jealous. I am not. I know you'd never cheat on me. You sound pretty sure of yourself. Yeah, well... I think I know a little something about women. Do you remember a few weeks ago when we were watching the Raiders-Packers game? And that one announcer guy on CBS started talking about the holes in Green Bay's red zone defense? I got to thinking as we sat there about how sexy he sounded. You mean Jim Nance? That's right. I remember thinking... That if he appeared before me in our bedroom one night with his little headphones on and told me about the bonus coverage of Cowboys versus Rams coming up right after the game, I'd do anything for him to possess me. 
just for one quarter. Oh my god, stop talking! That's disgusting! Who are you? No more disgusting than you staying up all hours writing erotic Bob's Burgers fan fiction. Those are my private papers! Here, drive yourself home. I'm gonna walk these mean city streets alone and try to come to terms with who I thought you were. This is Cape Cod, you idiot. Are you talking about the mean streets that go past the container store? Stupid wife with her stupid secret yearnings. She's probably gonna drive off and eat short ribs off the back of some loser's knee. Hi there, handsome. Interested in having a good time? Do I dare cheat on Donna with a sex worker? Donna cooks for me, cleans for me, still works full time, and I took a solemn vow. On the other hand, she folds her pizza slices in half vertically. God, that is so messed up. Yes, I will pay you for forbidden acts. How much? Mm, how does $200 sound? Um, okay, I have $55, and there's like six left on this Duncan gift card. These ski ball tickets are probably still redeemable somewhere, and... Oh, 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 here, take this. This is a rare Topps baseball card showing Clayton Kershaw reading Gravity's Rainbow in the bullpen. Hey, Paul, long time no see, man. Who's this? Oh, Jimmy. Um, uh, this is... Uh, my daughter's cello teacher. I'm not just Melanie's cello teacher. I'm also a successful prostitute. Hi. Come on, Paul. You don't need to do this. If you're interested in some action, I'm playing the tubular bells at a late night party out in the country. It's the craziest orgy you've ever seen, man. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's go. Uh, wait. I can't let anyone know I told you about it, so you gotta show up alone. Also... You can't possibly get in the way you are now. What do you mean? Is it a costume party? Nah, you just gotta bring two cans of food for donation. They collect for charity. Oh, I hate that. Good evening. I'm here for the party. Could I have your password, please, sir? Password. Um, it's Schmorgenven. The orgy is at the end of the hall to your left. Please, like us on Facebook when you're done. Oh my god, all these women are naked! Hmm. Music's kind of strange. A few more dried goat carcasses hanging from the ceiling than I usually like to see. You! You must get out of here. You don't know the danger you're in. Oh, hi, naked lady. Um, uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm just another party guest. They suspect you're not one of them. Leave. Right now. Look, I, I'm, I'm sorry I took a can of chunky soup from the collection box, but my Safeway never gets the spicy beef flavor. Run for it, quick! Oh, why won't you listen? I gotta be honest, I, I think it's the toplessness. It kind of it hurts the old credibility. You there! Please! Come forward! Me? Uh, uh, I, yeah, I, uh... Before we get too heavy into the depravity, do you do like, a, like, like an icebreaker? Favorite childhood snacks, that kind of thing. Interloper, you have trespassed where you do not belong. I condemn you to death. Death? But I told the Uber to wait. Stop! I am ready to redeem him. So it is. Sir, you have been saved. You have five minutes to leave the premises. And if you ever tell anyone what you have seen here, 
there will be the most dire consequences. Where are they taking that woman? What's going to happen to her? Nothing can change her destiny. Now before you go, please fill out a short online survey about your orgy experience. Hello, sir. Welcome to Denny's. One for breakfast? Um, no. Is Jimmy working today? No, sir. He was scheduled to come in for a shift, but he left a message. It was mostly grunts and little whimpers of pain, possibly inflicted by two or more burly men, but it sounded like he wanted to let us know he wasn't coming in. Did he happen to mention anything about a mysterious orgy? A hooded and masked master of ceremonies? Or... A woman fated to die at the hands of her captors? I'm trying to think. Uh... No. No, not that I can recall. Okay, thank you. Hello, sir. Can I help you? I'm here to demand answers. There was a woman here last night in great danger, and I want to know what happened to her. Sir, you must be mistaken. There was no party here last night. No one lives here, nor do I. In fact, there is no house. Um, yeah, I think you had something going there in that first part, but you you pushed it too far. What is real? Sir? And what is dream? Look, I have proof right here that there was an orgy here last night. I took one of these commemorative coins from the basket on my way out. Date, time, and logo. Right there. You're busted, Jeeves. Sir, we are warning you one last time. Make no further inquiries. I think that phone call will explain everything. What phone call? Hello? Paul, it's me, Simmons. Come to the mansion right now. It's time I explained everything. Peace out, sir. A Paul Harlan to see you, sir. Paul, come in. Hey, you want a drink? Sure. You're a Hawaiian punch man, right? Yeah. In the little can, if you have it. Paul, there's a few things I think you need to get straightened out on. See, I was there last night. You were where? Come on, at the house. I've been to like seven of those orgies. I'm a rewards member. Then maybe you'd care to explain that little drama with the naked woman and her murder. Paul, nothing happened. That whole thing was a big charade. The whole point was just to scare you away from telling anybody. As we speak, that woman is safe and sound, giving a talk on naval weapons development to her colleagues at Lockheed Martin. We just can't have outsiders at this kind of party, especially someone who wore cargo shorts. If what you say is true, how do you explain the fact that there's an enormous field right behind your house where I saw a dead body being put into the ground. Because anyone can fake an enormous ornate stone sign that says Beth Israel Hebrew Cemetery, and then put up... Ah, screw it, I don't know what to believe anymore. Just tell me one thing. Those women really were naked, weren't they? Yep. That is so awesome. Tell me about it. Well, now that your strange adventure is over, I think we've learned a valuable lesson about trust, Paul. Agreed. I don't trust you. I I think I want a divorce. Well, I'm glad you said it so I didn't have to. I mean, think of it. If we split up, we get all our nights free again, we each get our own bed... There's a whole new set of people out there who don't know how emotionally unstable we are that we can mess around with. It really is kind of a one-stop solution to about 12 different problems. 
But you know, before we sign any papers, there is one thing we need to do as quickly as possible. What's that? Oh my god, you're repellent! Go wash your mouth out with barium or something. I have known some perverts in my day. God! You need to live under a tide pool! June 7, 1531. Our expedition of brave conquistadors plunges ever deeper into the bloody stump mountains. I, Father Juvenal Herrero, shall document our progress toward the fabled lost city of gold, though for weeks it has been only a miserable slog through dense forests and stifling heat. The natives we have encountered are so primitive they have no language, and communicate only by sneezing. Five men have died of a combination of starvation, dehydration, and pink eye. Fortunately, there seems to have been a brief wave of optimism through the ranks as we prepare to enter something called the Valley of Ticks. We'll camp here for the night. Zafaro! Shape the feces of the mules into tents for those of higher rank than you. Enjoy your time in command, Vasquez. It is coming to an end. More than anything else, I worry about this renegade Zafado, who covets the position of leader of the expedition, yet whose hold on reality seems more and more tenuous. Last night as we camped, I heard him praying to God for our deliverance, but then realized he was actually talking to a sock monkey he has named Terry. Machiavello, come here. What is it, Zafado? This expedition is doomed unless we have a stronger man in charge. I want you to kill Vasquez as he sleeps. But he is my friend, Zafado. Many times he has wiped the mud and spittle from my face, and if he is gone, that would leave Rojo in command, who is utterly incompetent. I will give you twenty ounces of sap if you commit this heinous deed. Mmm, sap makes a good day better. Zafada, wake up. I have done the terrible deed. I set Vasquez on fire and pushed him off the cliff where he fell a thousand feet into a cave of black bears that tore him limb for limb. Fool! How can you be sure he's dead? I descended and heard his last words. So peaceful. Very good, Machiavello. Unfortunately, you now represent a great danger to me. Meet your maker! <laughs> My designs on power proceed apace. Come, Terry. Let us dine on termites and dew to celebrate. June 14. With the fool Rojo leading the expedition, our fortunes have gone from bad to worse. We are traveling on rafts down the Lunatico, a river so deadly that 50% of all its piranhas commit suicide rather than live there. Rojo's decisions are questionable at best. Everyone's attention, please. God came to me in a dream last night and told me that the lost city of gold demands a sacrifice if we are to ever reach it. He wants us to proceed without pants. That's crazy. You're mad, Rojo. Too many of these expeditions end with no one having pants. All those in favor of putting a new man in charge, raise your hands. That's 11 to 10 against Rojo. Where's our Bulu? His most loyal compatriot. His is the key vote. Our Bulu mysteriously disappeared last night. 
We're hopeful for a safe return, but we found one of his pinkies in our leaf mush at breakfast. The Queen's Charter decrees that the next in line to lead after the first two expedition heads is whoever can answer the following trivia question. Who played second base for the 1524 Machu Picchu Diamondbacks? The answer is no one, as the plague killed the entire team. And with that, Zafado became leader. Now it is June 26. He steers our one remaining raft onward down the river at an insane pace, not even stopping to fish or hunt. For the last three days we have eaten only head lice. Our nightly games of tag end with people accidentally running off the raft into the fatal current, and our subtitles are more and more ridden with typographical errors. Look! Just past that beautiful cloud of butterflies, the one that ate Chevis's legs. A native approaches in a canoe. Bring him aboard! The savage, having never seen a human being outside his own tribe, at first believed us to be giant sunflowers. We could not rule out the possibility that he was a complete idiot. Farfan, ask the savage where we can find food. Make ma don carpo? Ni no do matna. He says his people survive only on a hamburger that is made entirely from plants. But there has been a great famine, and now they are starving. A hamburger made only from plants. Does he expect us to believe that? Ask him if the lost city of gold is close. Make ba don farbo? Ni nag du katna. He says the lost city of gold is only a myth, and the only thing that lies at the end of the river is slightly angrier crocodiles. It can't be true. We are the chosen who will claim the lost city of gold for Spain. Ask him, if it doesn't exist, why are there always so many flyers about it left on the Queen's carriages? We shall paint the native blue, put a beaver on his head, and set him at the front of the raft as a good luck charm. There is to be neither sleep nor cards against humanity for anyone, unless we cover one hundred more hectares by nightfall. August 8th. Having run out of head lice to eat, we only suck on each other's earlobes for the precious salt within. The ten of us who remain alive are so weak we can barely rouse enough energy for charades come nightfall. Zafado whispers to his sock monkey at night about his plans to become king of the lost city of gold. I hear him say his first act will be to declare the moon to be his legal daughter. O oh Lord, why did thou let me sign up with this nutcase? I should have gone with Pizarro on his expedition to discover Fort Lauderdale. That dude is a baller. The natives are attacking from the shore! Fire the cannon! We ate the cannon six days ago. Set the sacks of gunpowder aflame! We used it all as seasoning for the head lice. Then wave your privates around in a menacing fashion. This arrow in my heart is not real. It must be a hallucination brought on by hunger. Ditto this one in my back. Okay, the crotch arrow feels real. All of them dead, Terry. Only I and you, my loyal sock monkey, will arrive on this raft at our wondrous destination. There, we will marry each other and breed a race of elfin geniuses who will create a communication device that can harness all of human knowledge in one pocket-sized rectangle. I shall call it the Portable Compu Scroll and we will use the billions we make from its sale to purchase Jupiter. We shall eat leaf mush off the finest china and sleep at night on only the highest-rated straw. 
What's that you say, Terry? I'm crazier than a hyena dipped in rainbow sprinkles? Well, look who's talking. You're made out of a sock, yet you speak incessantly of applying to Rutgers. It has been one month since I washed up on the shore, and my wounds were healed by kindly natives. They have brought me to the lost city of gold, which was only another forty yards downstream from where our expedition ended in death and insanity. The good news is that our dreamed-of destination truly does exist. The bad news is that, because the entire damn city is made out of gold, it's no longer exactly rare, probably bringing its monetary value around the globe down to pretty much nothing, which we might have wanted to consider before we started out. <sighs> Typical Father Herrero luck. Anyone got a different god I can follow? Come in. Hello, sir. Yusuf, welcome back. How's the life of a retired cosmonaut? It's great. I just learned how to bead a wallet. Would you like your wallet beaded? Uh, not today. Hey, listen, sit down. There's a matter I wanted to consult you about. We've been receiving some distressing video dispatches from Space Station Gherkin 4. These last few are from Paramotive, only one of three cosmonauts on board. Will you take a look and let me know what you think? For the last seven days, we have floated 12 miles above Obelus. This strange planet seems to be emitting a powerful and unidentified kind of radiation. I feel a little funny in the head. I have been having stranger and stranger ideas. For example, maybe chess would be more interesting with 20-sided dice somehow. Also, I... I don't think scented candles are a gift anyone really wants. April 12th. I keep telling the others we're floating too close to Hobeless, but they won't listen. The colors of its surface are hypnotic. Imagine a blue so red it's almost yellow. It's doing something to me. Inexplicably, I've begun to believe Dippin' Dots may be underrated. The fat scientist who hates celery won't come out of his room. The skinny one who hates yams has disappeared from hers. Obelus is slowly destroying us. I'm signing off for good. If you enjoyed these videos, users also like my series of disturbing reports from Starbase Niblick. Very disturbing, sir. Was that a slab of bacon he was wearing on his head at the end? I want you to journey to the station and check it out. What's the state of the crew? What is the true nature of Obelus? Might it have waterfront, where we could build a mixed development of upscale retail shops and luxury residences? You leave tomorrow. Yes, sir. I'll do it for Mother Russia. That's the name of the jug band I started, because I have so much spare time now. W would you like to hear some jug music? Uh, not today. Space Station Gherkin 4, this is Cosmonaut Yusof, requesting permission to board. Thank you for using the Gherkin 4 landing app. This app requires an update to version 7.3, and to dock your craft, you must log in with a valid Amazon account. Manual override. I'm on official outer space business. Please switch docking settings to... HDMI 2. Very well, sir. Our space docking music options now include Johann Strauss's The Blue Danube and Free Fallen by Tom Petty. You there, Lazarev. What's going on in this station? You must be from ground control. I've been feeling a little... 
funny lately? Would you like to sit and make mud pies with me? Why are you wearing a duck costume? Where are the other two crew members? Paramonov sent us a video telling us that he's locked in isolation trying to digitize Sean Connery into Caddyshack. Morosco hasn't left her laboratory for six weeks. She's trying to create a robotic omelet. The radiation from Obelus has driven you all mad. Switch on that observation screen. There it is. Only eight miles away now. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, you know, sometimes I sit and stare at it for hours. Those giant flickering images on its north quadrant. Is that... purple rain? On Tuesdays, the surface of Obelus shows old 80s movies. Wednesdays, it's usually a slideshow of cute corgis. What other effects has it had on this ship? Well, there's a pretty good one right behind you. Hello, Yusuf. Irina. My wife. But... but this can't be. You're dead. Obelus has given me back to you. Are you real? Can you be... touched? Go ahead, my darling. Put your hand on me. My nose is what you choose first thing. Sorry, I... I can't believe it. Do you remember when you... you... Killed myself? No, I don't. I only remember the wonderful times we had together. Walking in the snow. Dancing in the snow. Recovering together from hypothermia. Oh, Irina. Here. Let's spend some quiet moments together in the matter vaporizer. You get in first. What a lovely idea. Well, that was officially the creepiest thing that ever happened. Lazarev, how do you explain my dead wife's reappearance? That kind of thing began happening after we started beaming Kelly Clarkson's songs to Obelis' surface in an attempt to communicate with its cloud formations. I fear we will never understand its nature. What's more concerning is that Obelis seems to be expanding. Wake up. Wake up, Yusuf. Yeah, you're back. Uh, so Obelus regenerated you? No, actually, the matter vaporizer didn't work. You have to log into it with a Verizon account. Do you... do you not want to be with me anymore? It's just that I'm consumed by guilt over you stabbing yourself. It's true that you drove me to it with your failure to ever use a coaster or use hot water to rinse the dishes. But now we are together. I am more mature now. I, I think I even understand the point of a duvet cover. Oh, Yusuf, take me away from this awful place. Take me back to our home. Yes, darling, I will. Let me clean it up first, though. I've just been kind of throwing my dirty laundry into the corner of the closet. I'm starting to remember some of your more challenging aspects. So you've killed yourself three more times in the past 24 hours and mysteriously reappeared after each one, my dear. Fascinating. I... I can't exist like this anymore. We've got to do something. We've got to return to Earth and leave Obelisk B. Agreed. But the navigation drive needs four new AAA batteries and we have none. I do have one novel idea, though. What is it? The surface of Obelus seems to settle when the brainwaves of a rational human mind are transmitted to it. You, Yusuf, haven't been here long enough to go insane, so I think we should try yours. It's worth a shot. It will simply involve going to sleep and trying not to have any unusual thoughts. Is there anything of concern we should try to suppress? Mm, 
on the way up here, I was thinking that I really wouldn't mind another Terminator sequel. <coughs> and there she goes. Is he completely in REM sleep? Yes, and it seems to be working. Look at the observation screen. Obelis is shrinking! Wait, what is this incoming signal? Dr. Lazarev, this is the planet Obelis. Please, stop the brainwaves. I just wanted to give you a little entertainment out here in the coldness of deep space. Flash a few colors, show some old movies, resurrect the odd dead spouse. Sorry if my radiation caused your primitive minds to go craze balls. But please, stop transmitting your thoughts to me. They're incredibly irritating. What do you mean? The human Yusov's brainwaves are filled with meaningless sports trivia, bits of cable news, and rush lyrics. Is this what passes for human imagination, culture, and philosophy? You're forgetting our greatest contribution to the universe, Obelis. Love! Oh, don't give me that. According to this guy's thoughts, he only married his wife because he has a thing for women with big eyebrows. Not on the carpet! Not on the... Ah, hell! Go away now, Lazarev, and bother me no more until your kind has advanced another six or seven intellectual and emotional levels. At least to the level of a chicken or a house cat. So, Yusuf, you abandoned the station and returned to Earth in your own craft, taking the crew with you. Understandable. Are they recovering from their madness? I thought it would be cheaper to euthanize them all, sir. I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. But I've got another mission for you. A meteorite crashed south of Leningrad while you were gone, creating a strange zone where reality seems to be an illusion. And in that zone, there exists a room in which one's most secret wish comes true. Can you go and give me a full report? Sorry, sir. I'm back in mourning for my dear late wife. All good. I understand. Fill it up with uh, premium, please. Yes, sir. Hello, Yusuf. Arena. But we're no longer near Obelis. Why are you alive again? My darling, I'm sure it's because your love for me is so powerful that it transcends time and space. I know you have flaws, but I want to be with you always. Yes, Arena. Yes. Hey, do me a favor and run in and get us a couple of almond joys, will you? For our ride back to our home. Well, why don't you go in then? Well, I have to pay the guy pumping the gas, so that doesn't make sense. Okay. Give me your key ring. It's got the discount club fob on it. They have to scan it for the two-for-one deal. Okay, I'll just keep the ignition key. Why? Well, it's just the one pump, you know. So if someone else pulls up while you're in there, then then I'm that guy who's, who's, who's blocking it. Right. Okay. So I'll be right back. Fabulous. Almond Joys, going home, new life. I can't believe some people lay out twelve ninety nine a month for a matter vaporizer. And the Lord said to the people gathered on the shore, Take the fish from this ocean. Place it between two pieces of round bread. Add tartar sauce and eat of it, that you might become strong. Then go to Galilee on this day and spread the word of God. It doesn't have to be any specific word. They will get the gist. Let us pray. 
Since we have just the four of you at services today, I invite you all to grab a communion wafer to go from the tray outside. I'm lying down. That's many Sundays gone by with just the same four parishioners, Wickstrom. I barely need to hose off the kneelers. Why do you suppose no one comes to services anymore? Because they sense my quiet desperation, Wickstrom. It isn't seemly for their priest to be such a miserable, self-loathing worm. You are too hard on yourself, Father. Perhaps it's more that these... Simple country folk are put off by the downcast nature of the sermons. Few of them understand that when you call humankind a doomed, reeking mass of congealed obsidian agony, you're not trying to be pessimistic. How is your texting injury feeling this winter, Wickstrom? Oh, my thumb suffers so, Father, but I must not complain. As it says in Corinthians 7.12, recount not thy sufferings, nor thy manias, for at least thou is not covered in saliva of swine, nor stuck working in customer service. You are a strong and honorable parson, Vickstrom. Ingrid, what are you doing here? I need to talk to you, Rolf. Would you leave us for a moment, Vickstrom? Certainly. I have to go type up Father Nick Fist's sermon for the evening service. Oh, you'll like it, Miss Lund. It's called Unheard Agonies, Useless Prayers. So, excuse me. I was just about to take a nap. Oh, Rolf, you look so haggard. Let me take care of you. I'll make you soups and stews and heal your ailments. We'll renew our love and try again to tend a garden together. I just know this time that we'll get cabbage to grow instead of wasps. For the last time, I do not wish your kind of love, Ingrid. Your clumsy embraces repulse me. I've never known a woman who reminded me so much of Jar Jar Binks. You are incompetent even at doing laundry. Because of your godforsaken homemade fabric softener, I am more rash than man. It is not you who is saying these terrible things. It's this bleak Swedish landscape... Sell the church on eBay and let's run away together to Tampa like we always talked about. Sorry, Father. Evald Fluden is here to see you. He says it's urgent. I'll be back when you're feeling better. Good day, Miss Lund. Happy holidays to you, Evald. Hello, Father. Please, sit down. You know who I am? Of course. Evald Floden. Voted the town's most depressed man in 2013, 2015, 2018, and 2019. How can I be of help? Father, everything seems so black. Each day is an adventure in sadness. I fear this world may never recover from its current ills. What in particular is causing you to feel this despair? It's... It's Blockbuster, Father. I miss it so. There was a time when it was fun to go out and rent a movie. Now I have 8,000 options, but they're all spread out across glitchy apps with names like Flickish and Eyeball, each wanting me to give them $7 a month to watch Jumanji while I try to frantically unsubscribe before my Discover card is charged. Do not torture yourself so, my son. You're forgetting what it was like on a Friday night to miss out on the last copy of The Royal Tenenbaums and be consigned in our darkest hour to fingering the sun-bleached box cover of Coyote Ugly. I have been pushed to the brink, Father! There's only one way out of this accursed state. Don't do it, Evald. God tells us that what you're considering is a mortal sin. I must go. I have a list of terrible shows my coworkers insist I have to watch! I'm so sorry to have troubled you. Come back, my son. The man is correct, my lord. The more viewing options we have, the more tiresome we all become. Please, give me the strength to just get through the gift swap after tomorrow night's service. 
All right, everyone. It's time to play Secret Joseph of Arimathea. Thanks for all your hard work for the church this year. And though our congregation is down from its high point of 1400 in 2007 to just six people today, I just know the year ahead is going to be a joyous one. Let's begin the gift swap. I drew Wickstrom. Here you go. Oh, thank you very much, Katinka. Oh, a box set of all Fifty Shades of Grey movies. I remembered you saying you hoped you could see a naked woman someday. Thank you. I can't wait to watch it. I drew you, Katinka. Here you are. Merry Christmas. Oh, the Criterion Collection edition of Mamma Mia 2. It includes Pierce Brosnan singing Enter Sandman for some reason. Here you are, Ingrid. It was your name I drew from the hat. Good tidings to you. Oh, Rolf, a copy of The Last Airbender. The clerk at Dollar General told me it has 28 extra minutes of the kicking. Last but not least, I drew you, Father. I hope it pleases you. The Grinch. Is this the Jim Carrey version? The Benedict Cumberpatch version? Or the original animated one? It looks like... Lars von Trier made this one. <sighs> What's wrong with all of us? Is this what we've become? Vapid content absorption mechanisms destined to grow fatter and fatter in front of our 70-inch screens? Don't any of us have the slightest bit of imagination anymore? Must we all live in fear each Christmas that someone will buy us season five of The Amazing Race? Oh, Rolf... How can you be so cruel? Hello? Oh. Oh. No. Oh, no. What is it? That was Evold Floden's wife. She found him in the basement of their house. He's... He started a podcast. He intends to review... Every episode of Blue Bloods. Oh, Lord Jesus, deliver him from his wilderness. <laughs> All right. All of you, get out of my sight. I'm canceling Christmas. You mean the Christmas mass? No, I mean Christmas. We are literally moving directly to December 26th. Now go! But I thought we were going to watch Spice World. Out! Out! Ingrid. I am vanishing from Mist Foggenden this very day to live on a tiny commune in Austin, Texas land. Please be so kind as to sell all my DVDs to continue funding the church. I want nothing to do with them anymore. Don't accept less than $40 for my personal cut of Mean Girls. If you and my other associates from the church should finally track me down in, say, six years or so, I will be willing to let you briefly into my home. Goodbye. Wickstrom! Katinka! Ingrid! How the hell are you? Father, you look so tanned. Is that really you? Damn right it is. Get on in here, you crazy kids. Ah, it's great to see everyone, but you, you, you all look so pale. You know, you can take off your coats and scarves. It's 81 degrees. Tell us, Rolf. What have you been doing with yourself these last few years? Ingrid, I'm a new man. Here at Candleblow, we have no access to modern electronic entertainment. I've never felt more relaxed, more peaceful. Oh, then you all do a lot of reading, then. No way. Too boring. What we do is stare. Stare? Yeah. We sit and we stare. We stare for hours. At, like, nothing. We don't know what movies are out. We don't know if TV even still exists. It seems to have done a world of good, Father. Please call me by my new nickname. Onions. Onions? Yeah, I don't get it either. 
But it just shows you how people's imaginations flourish when we're released from the tyranny of Sony Pictures, Disney, and Netflix. Is Netflix still even around? It is, but all they have left now is the Blade Trilogy and the last ten episodes of Frasier. And how is everything back in Mist Falcon? Permafrost still hanging in there? After you left, the congregation decided to vote on whether God exists. It was definitely close, but in the end the church was converted into a shell station. Oh, and the Holmquists finally replaced the broken wheel on their maggot cart. No, they didn't. They couldn't raise the money. Oh. Most of the time, we and the other townspeople have been... Yes? Forgive me, Rolf. I don't think you'd be interested in hearing about our small Swedish pursuits. You've grown past them. Hit me, come on. It's just that there's a new original series on Hulu Plus Plus Premium that's been preoccupying us. It's a 20-part adaptation of Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. Oh, well, what's so special about it? It's made by Paul Thomas Anderson. Really? Oh, oh, and it has... Uh, Joaquin Phoenix, Idris Elba, Emma Thompson, Emily Blunt, and Tom Hardy. That's pretty good. Uh, who, who did the music? Oh, they found 30 hours of unused film music by Ennio Morricone. And Annie Lennox wrote, like, a whole new album for it. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Because the heat is not yet working here in our new church, it's ten below zero, and it's just the five of us, we will keep this service short. My first sermon as returning pastor, Mr. Foggin, is called The Futility of Resistance in the Age of Endless Streaming Content. But first... Let us bow our heads, because we are so very tired. All right, Spinati, what do we got? It's a bad one, sir. Right in here. What's the damage? Aside from inventory depletion, we have one buffet employee being hosed down around back. She got covered in tapioca. Jesus, look at this mess. A crew of four white males came in around 345, all around age 19. They started hitting the buffet hard. An assistant manager reported they were still here at 6 when they were told the kitchen just couldn't keep up with them and they had to leave. Uh, they would already gone through one dozen steam trays, pot roast, macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, lime jello. These guys had experience. A busboy tried to take the head guy's buttered rolls away and the next thing anyone saw was cutlery flying everywhere. Trays upended and the cashier was pushed into this. I knew the pool of pudding was a stupid marketing idea. They got out the back way. We're going over the security tapes now. It's a waste of time. What do you mean? I think I know these guys. They call themselves the Biscuit Boys. Been working Fork Monkey's family skillet over for six months. You watch the tapes, you're going to see them come in individually before 3.30, so they can each pay for the lunch buffet, not the dinner. Between them, they save 14 bucks. They all sit apart, backs to the cameras. Then one by one, they use the bathroom as a funnel back into the dining room to sit together when the carving station opens and then chow down. Let me guess, the plates, they show no traces of dessert, right? That's right. Because they got interrupted. It was the giant sheet cake that was their ultimate goal, but the argument started first. Once the cashier went into the pudding and they knew they were in for a two-day ban, they didn't hesitate. They started throwing spoons, 
anything to cause a commotion that would make getting an ID tough. We figured with all they ate, they'd be slow in getting away. This place is at the intersection of two major freeways. No, these guys are good. They're methodical, probably had this joint cased for weeks. Ate nothing but celery for two days so they could come in on empty stomachs and get the maximum haul. All right, I want you to increase the number of please dine respectfully signs in Trenton, Baltimore, and Wilmington. And none of our locations gets fried chicken or the chef's choice meatloaf this week. I'm not letting us get hit again so soon. If we don't catch these guys, the entire proud eat till you wheeze chain is in danger. Got it? Hello? Emma? Where have you been? Dinner was four hours ago. I had a bad one today. I'm sorry. You're sorry. Your kid is upstairs, wondering why she never sees her father. Look, this is what I do for a living. You understand? An hour ago, I'm standing in the middle of a dining room with half the company's weekly shipment of fried okra gone because there are bad people out there, Emma, who don't understand the meaning of moderation. And you're the only one who can catch them, I suppose. No. I'm the best one who can catch them. I understand that Eat Till You Wheeze could go bankrupt because of rogue teenagers eating too much and hurting the profit margin. But doesn't your family come first? I gotta go. Walk out that door, and I don't want you coming back. What happened back at the buffet, man? That was chaos. You still owe us a dessert. We gotta lay low for a while. But I got a lead for us. There's a thousand pounds of turkey and stuffing coming into the Annapolis location on November 26th, plus 500 apple pies. How do you get this information? My parents took me there for my birthday, and I met a dishwasher with a grudge. Think of it! If we hit that place the minute they open, we can each take three-hour naps afterward, and then have regular Thanksgiving on top of it! That makes the Dover job look like an afternoon snack at Arby's. We got the new head of inventory security on us now. That's too much heat. Man, have you forgotten what we're about? We gotta show these corporate stooges that a rule's a rule, and all you can eat has meaning. We can't back down now. All right. Set up a meeting. Is the Tuesday hit still on? I have to tell my mom so she can drop me off. Yeah, at noon. Spinati, are your people in position? Yes, sir. Two in the main dining room, one on the roof. Do you have a good visual on the booth? Yeah, I'm looking at them right through the window, all four of them. All right, get ready. The menu changeover from lunch happens in 30 seconds. If they take one tater tot without paying the dinner surcharge, we're moving in. Yes, sir. Roger. Come on, what are you guys waiting for? Spinati, I've lost visual on the two ugly ones. Sir, they're just getting Mountain Dew from the soda machine. Just Mountain Dew? You sure? No move on the baked ham? Correct. The other two just got up. Where are they headed? To the cookie layout? They're all walking out the front door. They're leaving. They know we're watching. Somehow they know it. Should we give them a verbal warning? No, with a warning we show our faces, let them walk. But sir, one of them's carrying a pack of saltines out. That's a clear violation of... I said let them walk! Damn it! So now you guys know as much as I do. The guy tracking us is a real hunter. The question is... Do you still want to go through with the Thanksgiving job? Diaz? For that much food, it's worth the risk. I'm hungry, bro. Golden tall? I mean, it depends on whether they're going to bring out the chef's choice meatloaf that day. That's information we just can't get. For me, the actions may be worth a seven-day ban. You? Golden tall? I don't know. You has got community college coming up in the fall. Maybe you don't need to see. Man, that stupid school doesn't have an unlimited meal plan. I'm in. Me too. As long as your mom can give us a ride. 
All right, then we roll. Come on, we got a lot of work to do. And all of us on juice diets till then. We gotta make this one special. Got it? All right, you was allowed to pull me over? You a law enforcement officer? No, kid. Just an honest private citizen who wants to take you to Cracker Barrel. Have a little chat. Eh, sure. It is pot pie night. So, Tommy McShirley. Reprimands from management due to overeating. Fork Monkey's Family Skillet, 2017. Revocation of a Gift Card. Captain Gristle's Unlimited Meat and Mash, 2019. You know how this is going to end, right? Um, is it uh, okay if I get a slice of cake? I mean, the score. I know your crew must have something big planned. I am sorry. I can't not be what I am. So you never wanted a regular type life? Was that? Eating at fast casual places? With those chintzy portions? Have you ever had the kind of nap that comes only after eating three pounds of pork ends? Knowing you have the whole rest of the day free because your parents aren't pressuring you to get a job. Me and my friends, we don't have a lot to do. We need this. I keep having this recurring dream. In it, I'm in a restaurant full of unhappy customers because one guy not only ate the whole buffet, he drank the bean and meat juice from all the steam trays. I have one. Whereas I'm playing for the Boston Celtics, the 1983 NBA Finals. The only two people on the other team are Statler and Waldorf from The Muppet Show. Oh, uh, are, are you going to eat that pilaf? Yes, I am. I'm warning you. Stay out of any participating Eat Till You Wheeze locations until after the holidays. Your signs say all you can eat, and that customer service is a top priority to you. I'll do what I like. We'll see. Because if it comes down to a choice between my job and you and your pals hurting the company's bottom line for the sake of an enjoyable food coma, brother, you are going down. Well, who knows? Maybe we'll never see each other again. I'll get the check. Leave a couple of dollars for the tip. I only have dimes on me. Happy Thanksgiving, boss. Are you in the air yet? Yeah, from up here I can see the parking lots of every location in their possible target radius. It's 11 o'clock. The doors are now officially open in all three. Hello there. A table for four? Yes, please. Right this way, please. Capricorn One, I'm at the Annapolis location. I've got the targets here. I'm seating them now. Noonan, they're at the Annapolis location. How the hell did they get there? Wolverine 4 spotted the 2006 Nissan Sentra pulled five minutes ago. Four U's exited the vehicle disguised as One Direction. That's Golden Falls' aunt's car. They must have borrowed it and driven all morning. All right, we're going to have to rush them as soon as I land. Get Black Goldfish and Captain Crunch in position. Wait, wait, wait. No one's got the code name Captain Crunch. You heard what I said. Oh, man. These spam cubes are so much better than my Graham Grahams. I'm going to get more pizza clumps. There's no time. Go right to dessert. But they got waffle fries, man. You just heard me. I can feel the heat right around the corner. Excuse me, I need to get out the powdered donuts. But, sir, your plate has already stacked dangerously high. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to slow down a little. Stand back, old man! I'm 24. 
What is it, Levine? Miss Sizemore, these gentlemen are making a mockery of everything Eat Till You Wheeze stands for. All right. All for you? I insist you all take one trip to the salad bar before trying anything else. To Chino! Don't put any more hot fudge in the soft ice cream machine. Salad bar? I'll die first, you cobmonger! Hot dish security! Freeze! Green banana. I've landed, and I'm headed in. Die, gluttonous team trash! Spinani, I got my curly corner. The other three went into the air ducts. Call in the airstrike. Got it. Iron butterfly, iron butterfly, drop your load. You poor, stupid kid. Was it worth it? Dying for au gratin potatoes and insultingly undersized waffle cones? I told you, I ain't never going back to Chipotle. Yeah. Hi, this is rock legend Stevie Nicks. Eat Till You Wheeze would like to apologize to all the customers who were witness to the unpleasantness inside our Annapolis location on Thanksgiving Day. We're recommitting to the best possible customer experience by offering 10% off our lunch buffet every Tuesday in January. Prepare to marvel at our new bacon bit confetti cannon and kneel in devotion before the beautiful but terrifying 36 inch chicken strip. Once again, voted the most fried object in America by the National Restaurant Association. Mm-mm. Now that could be my silver spring. Ah, I forgot to work in my impression of Viola Davis doing an impression of Stanley Tucci. Ah.